Hey guys. So remember, vests can be really tricky. There's a lot of different parameters that affect a lot of different things in the way these boards ride. Please bear with me. I'm still learning all this myself and I'm trying to figure it out as I go. I definitely have a lot of help from some great people in the community, but we're all working through this together and trying to figure it out. So please bear with me. Any issues, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll try to get to what I can and help where I can. But remember, we're all learning this together. So, And don't forget to back up your configs. So here I'm going to show you how to update the tune on your T3. There still may be some tweaking and adjusting needed to different values to get it to ride exactly how you want, but this should end up giving you a pretty good tune. So first you're going to connect to your board. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to back up your configs. This should always be the first thing you do before you start messing with any of these settings. Once your configs are backed up, if your float package is already installed, you're going to want to disable it or go to package, uninstall current. Next, you're going to update this with the Foxtrot Ghost Milo. Desk package. Then for now, you're going to go and you're going to disable this float package so we can continue with our setup. So you'll go over to the new float tab, float config, specs disable float package and hit right. Now you can do these next in any order, but since we're on the float tab, we'll start with the float XML first. So you hit the little three dots in the corner, load XML. Find your float XML. And upload it. Once it's uploaded, hit right. Next, we're going to go to motor config, three little dots in the corner, and load XML. Find your motor config XML, upload it. Once loaded, hit right. We're going to go to our app config, three dots in the corner, load XML, find your tune, which is going to be your app XML, upload. Once this is all done, hit right. You should now have a good bass tune in here. Now you're still going to have to do the motor config and the IMU setup. So for setting up your motors, you're going to, it can be in any orientation. You just have to make sure that the wheel is off the ground. So set up motors. You do not want to reset to defaults. Select EUC next. Large outrunner. We're going to override here, change the ERPM to 2000, and the motor poles to 30. And you're going to hit yes. This board does have a 16S2P, 67 volt battery, so there are 16 cells and it is 7 amp hours. Hit OK. It is direct drive, so make sure you select that. 305 millimeters is the diameter of the T3 slash X5 wheel. Now we're going to run detection. 
We only need to detect the one motor, so we're going to deselect that and hit OK. Now while it does this process, it's going to spin up, it's going to make noises, it's going to stop itself. You are going to need to go into the motor tab and adjust a few values because doing this does change some of the settings. When it's all done, you should get something that looks similar to this. And it's also possible that these boards will do a little wiggle dance after this and randomly. And that's something I haven't been able to figure out yet, but it doesn't affect the performance in any way. These values look all right, so we're going to hit OK. We're going to skip this part for now because we don't know which way the orientation is set yet. Now we're going to go... to the motor config. Now we head to motor config. We're going to go general current. And you want to set this your max current to 120 and your max current braking to negative 120. Your absolute max is going to be set to 150. Battery current max can set at 40 amps and negative 30 amps is all right for now. Then make sure you hit right before leaving the screen. Next, general voltage. Our battery voltage cutoff start. We want to set nice and low so that we're not losing any power. We're going to set it, since our battery cutoff is 48 volts, we're going to set our actual battery cutoff a little higher, but for our cutoff start, we're going to set it at 49 volts. Our battery voltage cutoff end is going to be at 48.5. The batteries in the new Ghost Milos and the Trotters Mag Wheels, they have a hard cutoff at 48 volts that requires you to actually unplug and replug in the battery itself to reset it, which is causing some issues. So setting it like this is going to keep that from ever being a thing. You're also going to want to go in and cut the observer gain in half. Whatever the default value is, just take that and have it for now. And this generally helps with any kind of motor crunch. We're going to go back to the start menu and now we're going to set up the IMU. So first we start with the gyroscope calibrations. Let it sit there however it's sitting. Make sure to not walk around it, wiggle, anything like that. Wait for those to get pretty comfy and call it good. Next, the accelerometer calibration. The X value is going to be straight up and down. Slowly and gently, try to get it as close to one or its highest point. Once you hit and can't get any higher, go ahead and save. For the Y value, you're going to turn it on its side. So that the number goes higher. Again, you're going to want to try and get as close to a 1 or higher as possible. Slow, gentle movements. A 
once you hit a stable high there, save. The Z is going to be riding position, so essentially on its wheel and pretty close to level. Once you hit a stable max there, save. For these, you can generally just input the values manually. But for here, we're going to actually run it. So this is, again, just sitting flat level. Again here. Pitch angle raised. This doesn't always take, so we're going to see if this works. I believe that is supposed to be negative 180 instead of regular 180. So this is why we hand test things. So we're going to re-enable the float package and write. Let's check our ADC voltage. This all looks correct. We are going to adjust this down to 52 volts. Just to give us a little more wiggle room before kickback, pushback. The point here is to make this board unrideable due to pushback before it can sag enough voltage to dip below 48. So here we can manually adjust the orientation calibration. App config IMU and down to the IMU rotation yaw. Again, I believe this is supposed to be negative 180 to get a negative value. There we go. Just that one, negative 180. And right. Now it should have its proper orientation. All right. Seems that we did not. All right. So now we're going to disable your float package or re enable your float package and hit right. All right. So it seems to me that that orientation is not going to be correct. So we're going to go back. We're going to change that to negative 90 and right. Oh, actually, I believe my issue was that I, cha I inverted the motor direction. So we're going to leave this at a 180 and make sure that our motor direction is not inverted. You can find that on the Start tab, Invert Motor Directions. Because I do have it inverted, that may be throwing me off here. So I'm going to uninvert it. And then test the forward button. Remember, keep it off the ground.
check the app UI and see where it thinks it is. The real time data. Okay, so currently this thinks that it is rotated. So we're going to go back to the app, change that to negative 90. Now we'll go back to real time data. That may be us. Now let's try. So for the orientation on this particular board, and possibly others, this your orientation is going to be negative 90 for this. And these we can honestly set right to zero. And our rotation yaw to negative 90, then we hit right. Let's see how some of these transferred over. These all seem to have transferred over correctly. I have the ATR turned off completely to prevent any nose hunting or odd behavior. This can be adjusted yourself. Everything looks pretty good. Field weakening. Now if you have your ramp up time set too low, no matter where you have your field weakening, it will feel like it loses power quickly in certain situations. I learned that up in it to a little over a half second seemed to smooth that out for me personally. But now it's just to test it and see if there's anything that needs to be tweaked. You keep it from doing the little wiggle dance and making noise while sitting still. I found all we have to do is turn this braking current down to zero, hit right. Now this will allow it to just freewheel when it's on, but it'll stop it from doing a lot of other odd behavior.